So the mountain that you can see behind me, the Matterhorn, three years I have been preparing to climb this mountain. And Monday, I'm gonna climb it. God damn, look at the view. I uh, arrived yesterday here in uh, Zermatt in Switzerland, which is a small, I guess it's considered a city, I'm not sure, or a town, where uh, the Matterhorn is. A mountain that I've been wanting to climb for a very long time. And uh, I can't believe that it is actually happening now. Ever since I first saw footage of the Matterhorn on YouTube, uh, uh, feeling scared, just so scared of seeing that footage, I got really intrigued by that fear. And I always liked climbing, but I always had a, a fear of heights. And I never really understood that fear even though I liked the movement of climbing and I got really interested and intrigued to explore that fear that I booked a first mountain after watching that video of the Matterhorn and my first real mountain was the Mont Blanc to kind of face this fear because uh, it was a fear with also a desire to want to do that more to want to do like real climbing more as I really liked the movement and, and you know and the climbing you know I like that but I just the fear of heights stopped me always and over these last three years the ultimate goal was always to go and climb the Matterhorn and it took me three years now because the last mountain that I climbed the Watsman I felt ready the Watsman was easy for me it was like an easy hike I felt like okay this is getting easy, I feel ready for the next level, for the, the ultimate mountain for me that I've been wanting to climb, the Matterhorn. In this vlog I want to touch upon a few things, you know, of course, the Matterhorn and, and the footage of climbing it and I want to provide some tips for anyone who is, who is looking for information on climbing the Matterhorn. Uh, you know, I will give some here in this video but also in the description uh, I will write out anything helpful for this climb and Zermatt and any information right uh, you can find in the description so do check them out but I also wanted to talk actually in this vlog about this journey of facing my fear of heights and what I've come to learn from it because it is more interesting than I think some people might realize it is interesting to, to, to sort of look back now and realize the progression and that so many things in life are a skill and fear of heights is a skill too. You know, it's not even getting comfortable with heights, it's just the more confident you are in your capabilities and your skills of, of what you can endure physically and mentally. Uh, and then also just having climbing skills like with bouldering and rock climbing uh, knowing how to position your hands how to position your body uh, like you know it helps to feel more confident confident and more comfortable as well when you are exposed to heights because I'm still afraid of heights like that fear that I thought three years ago that I wanted to get rid of it's still there like I, I still have the same fear of heights and the interesting thing is that a lot of people don't realize because a lot of people want to get rid of their fear of heights. You should not get rid of it. It is there for a reason. And that reason is to keep you alert when you are at a height exposed to danger. Like your body needs that fear 
to get into an ultra focus mode. And so what I've actually learned over these last three years of, of slowly exposing myself to more difficult climbs and more exposed mountains is that this fear is actually a helpful tool to stay focused and to stay alert on the moment itself. For anyone, you know, looking to also get a little bit more of the insights of this journey that I've taken now to get to this point of climbing the Matterhorn. Fear is not the enemy. Like the heights of fear is not what you should get rid of. Like embrace it and look, because a lot of people look at it as a negative thing and then it becomes a negative thing. But if you look at it as the resource and the tool that it actually is, then it becomes a positive thing and then you will also realize how it can help you. So how to get more comfortable with fear of heights? see the fear of heights as a positive tool and just get more good at the abilities of climbing like you know go bouldering get uh, yeah some climbing skills in slowly at the level of mountains so you get more so you get to know yourself more and your capabilities because it's really about that like knowing what you can take mentally and physically because that is gonna then add to the confidence of what you can do and that is what you can level up. But the fear of heights, that is what you should embrace and that is what you should use as the tool it is, it is for. So it is there to help you survive.
So, after one hour of sleep and one snicker, I finally have ascended the Matterhorn. So I've been back actually now for a couple of days from my trip of the Matterhorn. I got a haircut as you can see and I've been busy working on the vlog which is actually quite finished. Uh, it's basically this part now that I still had to record which is sort of the afterthoughts of my climb. If you're not here really seeking for information about the Matterhorn then this part here is probably gonna be well not really maybe interesting to you. The first question that I think most people have uh, and the question that actually once I posted a photo where I stood on the top of the Matterhorn that so many people asked me how difficult is it? You know how difficult is climbing the Matterhorn? Because if you see the mountain it's impressive like it's really impressive. I've been struggling to answer that question and I can't really give an answer to that question and I do want to give you my personal answer, but it's really just my personal answer, right? And the reason why I can't really answer that for everyone is just because everyone is different and I don't know who I'm talking to right now who is watching this video. For some people when you say something is difficult, it is easy for them and for some people when you say it's easy, it's difficult for them, right? Like, it's really hard, it depends on so many factors. In general, of course, you can say that the Met Matterhorn is like physically demanding and technically more of a technical climb, yet uh, it's not per se that it is like when you go to a climbing uh, wall or when you go vertical climbing that it's that kind of technical level of climbing that you need, right? Because uh, it's quite, you know, as you probably saw in the, in the vlog, yeah, like you can position your hands on quite of uh, many of the rocks really well like they're good holes basically <laughs> so it is technical uh, the most technical mountain in alpinism that I've climbed that's for sure but in comparison to actually going bouldering or going vertically climbing it was quite fun just like easy I don't want to put on it but it was just fun you of course have different ways to go up to the top, but the most common route that I took was the Hornil Hut. Uh, I think that's how the hut was called, and that's basically the the, the standard, the easier one. Uh, so that's from the Swiss side, but then you can also go from the Italian side, which is a bit more difficult, but more cheaper. Physically, it was very much like the Mont Blanc. Uh, the Mont Blanc is not a very technical climb per se, it's more like a little bit of scrambling and you know, it's fun. Uh, but most of the parts of the climb of the Mont Blanc are just very like physical, demanding, like you just have to keep walking, you have to keep moving. And that was the same with the Matterhorn, it was just physically very demanding. I felt like I could have done a better job, like I did prepare, but maybe not to the extent that I should have. Uh, mainly I just went on very long hikes um, every week, uh, like twice and I did that for three months uh, and then before I went to the Matterhorn I climbed with some friends uh, a mountain, the, Zoo, uh, the Alpspitze in Garmisch to get another, you know, to get another like more mountain hike in and to get a little bit more used to the altitude. Uh, so I did prepare but I felt when I was climbing the Matterhorn of course the hour, just one hour of sleep didn't help uh, but I felt that I physically could have trained myself better. To prepare for this mountain, I would definitely double down on the physical training. Uh, and I mean, I live in Belgium, so altitude training would have been better if I could have done that. Like, it, it's hard to sometimes combine work with also preparing for this, right? So it's not always ideal, it depends where you live. If you live somewhere in the mountains and you can go and do more altitude training, so go for hikes, you know, in the mountains, then to prepare for this mountain would definitely help do focus quite a lot on the physical training as it's a really physical demanding mountain like you basically like we took we took maybe one break you know or two like one break at the shelter hut before the actual top top before we reached that and it was really just it was like 30 seconds like a quick zip and then we went up and then on the top we had a little small break but it r literally took maybe like a, a minute or, or three like we were on the top maybe yeah like five minutes or something so you 
you don't have a lot of time. Uh, you are constantly moving, like for nine hours straight. Alias, like my guide also told me that sort of th there's a deadline of you have to get to the top in four hours and 30 minutes. And I think the idea of why is that if you can't reach it to the top in four hours and 30 minutes in under that deadline, uh, it just means that you're not physically well in condition to get back safely because going down takes longer than going up actually because it's just such a steep mountain so you have to go very slowly down. Technically I would just prepare by actually going bouldering like I really the skills and the techniques that I know from bouldering just add to the confidence of of when you're out there because the danger just with the mountains like it's just that it's so exposed right you can't make a mistake. Like technically it was maybe not as difficult as going on a boulder route, but it's just, <laughs> the level of danger is just 10 times or 100 times like, you know, more dangerous there, right? Because you're so exposed. And that's where if you really feel like you know what you're doing, climbing, uh, then yeah, it's just, it's gonna be so much more fun. Other than that, if, if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, about the Matterhorn or about my experience or anything that you want to provide to other people uh, if you've climbed the Matterhorn or, or you know of the area of Zermatt or something that you want to add to this vlog you know please leave comments in the comment section down below I gladly yeah answer any questions that I can I also want to say actually you know because we are now at uh, I think 910 subscribers whoever you are who is watching uh, like thank you so so much just for for watching this video for watching my videos for you know if you are a subscriber for being a subscriber to my channel it's just really beautiful to see people enjoying my videos and getting something out of it and uh, I really appreciate you I really appreciate uh, that you watch my videos that you like them and that you are subscribed to them uh, if you're not uh, well, you're missing out, so go and subscribe. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that was my vlog. That was my journey of the Matterhorn, a mountain that for me was been like has been the ultimate mountain to climb. That was been the ultimate goal to go to, and it's really awesome to see that you know that you can like if you set goals how impossible they seem in the beginning. That if you work slowly to them that they can truly become a reality. And you know, there's crazier mountains out there than the Matterhorn, of course, right? More technical, more physically demanding. But for me, this was really the mountain uh, to, to work to. Um, I, now that I reached it, do not know yet what's gonna be the next ultimate mountain. Um, I have this little goal in my, you know, that I just wanna check off all the highest mountains of the world. So I'm slowly working on that, uh, but for sure I'm gonna put another ultimate mountain in there, uh, but I have to think about that. Uh, don't know yet which one. Uh, and at the moment I feel quite satisfied to be honest with the Matterhorn. So yeah, let's see what the future will bring uh, of adventures, but uh, for sure there will be some other ones. Don't know if it's gonna be mountains or something else.